In this video, we're going to continue on using the conduit looping method when wiring lights. And today's video, we're going to look at the wiring diagram for two-way and intermediate switching. If this is the first of the videos you've seen, there is a whole series of these, and I recommend you go back and watch some of the earlier ones. In all of the videos, there is a link in the description to this booklet. And this booklet, we've been working our way through, looking first of all at circuit diagrams. And this circuit diagram here of two-way and intermediate switching of a lighting point will help us produce the wiring diagram that we're going to do today. So make sure you check out that video. I've also got this here, which is a rig that I used to use at college, which is below us here. You can either build it yourself in plastic conduit or steel conduit, or you could be using something very similar at your college. And we're going to be working on the wiring diagram for stage six in this one which is switches one, two, and three, which is two-wayed and intermediate, controlling lighting point A with nothing else being used. And we'll put our cable through the conduit system accordingly to get that wiring diagram. There are some test result sheets you can fill in. I've also got videos on the channel where I test the circuits that we're using today as a wiring diagram. I physically test and wire those circuits up as well. So check those out in the playlist on the two-plate method. And then at the very back of this book, marking criteria and some of the other diagrams we've used in this series of videos. We'll come back to this one at some point. And this one here, you'll need several copies of this if you're working your way through these wiring diagrams with me as we go. So it's gonna be these three switches controlling this light. And as always, to the conduit looping method, we're gonna be using single insulated cables as a minimum 1.5 for our lighting circuits. Remember, they're stranded for greater flexibility when pulling them in through the conduit system itself. And the conductors are single insulated, mechanical protections provided by the conduits and trunking. And we can take our conductors exactly where we need them to go, unlike we found when we were doing things like the three plate looping method, we found some conductors were in a location where they weren't needed. And there is videos on the three plate and two plate and taking the feed through the switch methods of wiring light and circuits also on the channel. So let's concentrate on this two-way and intermediate um, switching of this lighting point here. There's some bits we're gonna have to put on first of all. I'm gonna to need to make this look like a lighting point and these like the actual switches. Again, you're gonna be using a ruler. So I'm just gonna put a line across here, put two terminals in it. This is a um, batten lamp holder with a bayonet cap. So it won't matter which one of these is neutral and which one is switching line. And I've left a point here for a circuit protective conductor. We've got these switches here. So let's have a look back at our circuit diagram. Our circuit diagram had a two-way switch, an intermediate switch, and a two-way switch. So we've got these here. So we've got all one gang switches, but as we turn them over, we've got a common L1 and L2. So that is a two-way switch, four terminals on our intermediate switch, and again, common L1 and L2 here. Always say on this one, this one is actually side on. So that wiring diagram is side on as the cables go through. And obviously we logically have our switches that way round. Okay, I mentioned that in that video. So we're gonna bring from our consumer unit, our line conductor into common. From L1 and L2, we bring strappers across, but we bring strappers across that either appear in the top two or the bottom two. Remember, we drew that side on, so that's still the truth, isn't it? That we come into common, two strappers, L1 and L2, go in either the top two or the bottom two. So we've got to remember that that way round. So strappers in, and then we come across with two more strappers, we come across to L1 and L2, two more strappers from an intermediate switch to our two-way switch, and then from common, we come into our lighting point. So again, if you haven't seen that circuit diagram, if you haven't seen that one, go back and watch that video to get that one filled in because we're gonna develop that forward. So look at it again, line from the consumer into common, two strappers across, two strappers across, and from common to the lighting point itself. These switches in the real world could be metal clad. They could be a grid variety of switch. Um, I'm just showing them as plastic, more domestic dwelling style switches. The terminations are identical on the back. So with that in mind, this is gonna be a two-way switch. This is gonna be an intermediate switch, and it's gonna be a two-way switch. So if I put my connections in here, like so. See, there's gonna be four in this one. And again, just here. And then I'll label my commons. So we've got a lighting point, two-way switch, intermediate switch, two-way switch, and our lighting point, and we're gonna develop it through. 
Let's look back at the circuit diamond and start with the easiest conductor probably to do from the consumer unit or the nearest lighting point, which we've looked at as well, but we're gonna come from the consumer unit. We're gonna bring our neutral directly to our lamp. So we've got our consumer unit down here. This is our neutral bar. This is our earth bar where our CPCs are connected. And this is fuseway number one, possibly gonna be a six amp at college. It could be greater in ampere rating. It might not be a type B in the real world. It might be a different type, depending on the type of load. But we're gonna come out of this fuseway and neutral one and CPC one to take our conductors round. The L and N in here are where the tails, these are the metering tails are entering the consumer unit. This is a two way consumer unit. So if we bring in, First of all, our neutral, just remind ourselves once again, from the consumer unit directly to the lighting point that we're feeding, from the consumer unit directly to the lighting point. So let's kick that one round. As always, your drawing will be considerably neater than mine. Hopefully you're using a ruler. Hopefully you're planning out the route of your conductors as well. So this is a uh, bayonet cap lamp holder. It won't matter which one's uh, neutral and switching line. So I've just popped that in. It will matter if it's an Edison screw. So make sure you look and check what type of fitting you've got. Most colleges will use a bayonet cap. So that's our neutral. That's our neutral brought round and in. We could now look at our CPCs if we wanted to. So we'll do that one next. Again, I've said it in other videos. I'm just using green this time and not green and yellow. I know I did in the uh, three plate and two plate method. I kept putting a, a line down it. I've not got a lot of room to make this look as logical as I possibly can. So CPC out of the earth terminal and we come round to the appropriate connection, which is gonna be that one in there. So we've got a CPC up here. CPC from the consumer to the first point. So we've got CPC terminals in our switches, even if they are plastic, remember, they can be changed for metallic and therefore making them an exposed conductive part. So a CPC will need to be at those locations. Let's bring a CPC down from here. Most logical one is down to here and into our earth of the light here. Switch, so that's in that position there. So from our light to our switch. Now I could come back from here over to here and back around here and over to here. I'm gonna just make it, I'm gonna have a rule and break the rule at the same time. If this was a few meters down to here, we're probably gonna come from the shortest CPC route down to here. So I'm gonna take one out of here from the light fitting and I'm gonna bring it round and into this switch, just like so. You could argue that this conduit is considered to be short in this one. Should I bring another one from here down to here? All I would say is that these style of light fittings, three conductors is probably the most you want to terminate into the back of them. So I've said in all the other ones to take it from the shortest possible route for this. To help you out into the workshop, I'm going to take a CPC out of here and I'm going to bring it round, ignoring that switch into here. This switch here is on my rig in order that I can stretch learners with four switches, three lights, etc. So don't worry that we've passed it through a switch. Obviously this is a mimicked installation. So our CPC has gone from our consumer unit to our light, from our switch down to our switch, from our light to our switch and round. It's a pretty logical route to take for our CPCs. It does break some of the rules that we said earlier on about making the shortest possible route for those CPCs because you would have had an extra one there and I don't like that. So now we've got to concentrate on these uh, line and switching line conductors from the consumer unit to the common of the first two-way switch, from the consumer unit to the common of the first two-way switch, two strappers across, two strappers across, again, two strappers across, and then from the common of this switch, we go back to the line point here. So hopefully you can see how this um, circuit diagram that we did previously actually works really well as a wiring diagram as well, as long as you put the two together and use the knowledge that we've built on in order to get to this point. So let's change pen color. So from the top of the breaker, hopefully at your college, you're gonna bring a line conductor, 1.5 millimeter squared stranded, single insulated as a minimum. And this is where it's gonna get really crowded I'm going to bring it down into my common. So from my consumer unit down into my common, two strappers across into my intermediate switch. And remember the intermediate switch, it's either the top two or the bottom two and not that way round. So we're not putting it across it on this style of switch. It's the top two or the bottom two. That's really important. That's where people go wrong when they test it. It doesn't work all the time. And they're going, well, it still works sometimes, Gaz, but it doesn't work on other times. It's because they've got the strappers in the wrong place. It's either the top two or the bottom two. Again, it doesn't matter L1 and L2 here where they come in as long as they go in the top or bottom, but what we don't want to do is bring them down the side. So let's bring this one round first. So that's my first of my strappers. 
bring it round. Got to be really careful now for room. I haven't got a lot of room. And let's make it easy. Let's go in the bottom too. So come round again. More room going up there. So my strappers, they're going to find their way round the system. Like so. So I've taken two strappers here, L1 and L2, and we've gone into here. You now see that I'd like a little bit more room in order to make mine a little bit easier. So now we're going to take these two across to here. So again, this is where it's going to start getting a little crowded. So I'm going to bring that one up. So that's another strapper coming up. And that's going to come round to either L1 or L2. And then our final one out of here, I'm going to have to just bring it right on the edge there. Hopefully you can see where we're going with it. And I'll bring that one down into there. So the drawing's getting busy, especially in this section here, but hopefully we can see from this here how we can actually work out where the conductors are going. And again, with a ruler and a little bit more bringing conductors over, hopefully you've got your drawing looking better than mine. So the line conductor comes into common, two strappers come across either to the top two or the bottom two of intermediate, doesn't matter which, and then two more strappers come out and they come into the L1 and L2 of our last two-way switch. And then we said from that two-way switch here, the common goes directly to the lighting point. So from this common, we're going to take it directly to the lighting point itself. I'm going to swing this one round. So from common, we're going to bring it into this light here. So now we've got it wired using the circuit diagram we've just seen and adding our conductors onto here. We've mapped out a wiring diagram. I don't, I don't confess it's uh, brilliant in this section here, Yours should be better than mine as we go through. We've got a CPC at every point, so we've obviously got the ability to change these for exposed conductive parts in the future. We're using PVC single insulated cables, so they go exactly where they want to go, so the neutral went directly to the lighting point. The line conductor went directly into the common of the first switch, and then we had our strappers and our switching line coming out of our final common in order to get our two-way and intermediate switch in. What I would do to my learners now is I'd start stretching them, I'd start saying I want this light and this light also to come on with these three switches. So at the minute when I operate these switches, it's only turning on this light here. But let's bring it through to here, let's bring it through to here. So that's a simple task. Hopefully you've got that from other videos that we just need to bring the neutral through and we need to bring the switching line through to here. But what I did say was once you get to three CPCs in this style of fitting that I use at college, it becomes difficult. You probably want to disconnect this one and bring it back to here and bring a new one across making only three here, two here, and then repeat the process. So this neutral comes across to here, this switching line comes across to here, we sort the CPCs out, that will come on. And then we can do the same here, we bring a neutral back and a switching line back to here, and then and sort the CPCs out, we would find that then we'd have this light and this light all coming on with these switches. I'd also take uh, this job here and I would say to a learner, maybe if it's turning on this light here only from these three switches, sometimes I say, I want a fourth switch to be added. So that really starts the thinking process. I've mentioned this in videos before. You can have as many intermediate switches as you want, as long as at each end you have a two-way switch. So it's now working out how to get an intermediate switch to here. So stop and have a think. What we need to do is, is break these strappers. So at the minute, the strappers come down to here into L1 and L2. If we took these out, disconnected L1 and L2 and brought them back into here, made it an intermediate switch, and then we brought a new set of strappers down from here into L1 and L2, and obviously need for a CPC here, it'd be done. So just think, pause, well, hang on, guys, that was too quick. Well, you know, stop, stop, go back, think. So I need an intermediate switch here that breaks the strappers. The strappers at the moment do pass through this location to get to here. If I unscrew the L1 and L2 here, bring them back into here, and go in either the top terminals or the bottom terminals of our intermediate switch, so I'll make that one the intermediate switch, bring these strappers back, I'm going to shorten them in length, go either in the top two or the bottom two, bring a new set of strappers down to here to go into L1 and L2 from either the top or bottom sets, and bring a CPC to here, you would actually have two-way, intermediate, intermediate, and a two-way switch, all controlling one light, two lights, three lights, depending on how your college lecturer or you've developed it at home, in the control. 
that's by just breaking the strappers. So we go two-way switch, intermediate, intermediate, two-way, back from the two-way switch is common to turn on a lighting point. You might be thinking, oh, this is getting all too much now. Remember, you're maybe watching these videos, working alongside your college lessons. I recommend you're reading books. You're watching other videos that are available on YouTube, and you're using this to, to increase your knowledge to apply it at college and work. And hopefully you're either got a job and there's an apprentice, or you're working towards getting an apprenticeship. But it's the effort you put in away from college, reading books, watching videos, maybe even filling some of my diagrams out, that will add to your ability, hopefully, to keep a job if you've got one, or to get a job if you haven't got one. It's You go into an interview, you show all the extra stuff you've done away from college, these sheets that I've developed for you, the videos you've watched, the things you now understand. You go back to college and you keep asking questions and keep pushing yourself to the maximum. It's like anything, the more effort you put in, the more you get out of it. And I know for some people, you know, you wanna just go to college and come home and forget about it. But for other people, it's about pushing themselves in order to make the most of it. I, I don't often say this, you can follow me on Facebook, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, I am on Twitter, I don't do a lot on Twitter, but um, I, I do like Instagram. And if you are struggling, sometimes if you reach out in certain areas, I can help, um, or I can point you in the right direction of videos and stuff that you want. So if you've got to the end of the video, you've got that information. If you've got to the end of the video, you're probably the sort of person that's gonna maximize the opportunities that are out there in order to get a job in the industry or remain in our industry. But as always, I hope this video has been some help.